John tells the good news. John 1. In the beginning was the one who is called the Word. The Word was with God and was truly God. From the very beginning the Word was with God. And with this Word, God created all things. Nothing was made without the Word. Everything that was created received its life from Him, and His life gave light to everyone. The light keeps shining in the dark, and darkness has never put it out. God sent a man named John, who came to tell about the light and to lead all people to have faith. John wasn't that light. He came only to tell about the light. The true light that shines on everyone was coming into the world. The Word was in the world, but no one knew Him, though God had made the world with His Word. He came into His own world, but His own nation did not welcome Him. Yet some people accepted Him and put their faith in Him, so He gave them the right to be the children of God. They were not God's children by nature or because of any human desires. God Himself was the one who made them His children. The Word became a human being and lived here with us. We saw His true glory, the glory of the only Son of the Father. From Him all the kindness and all the truth of God have come down to us. John spoke about Him and shouted, This is the one I told you would come. He is greater than I am because He was alive before I was born. Because of all that the Son is, we have been given one blessing after another. The law was given by Moses, but Jesus Christ brought us undeserved kindness and truth. No one has ever seen God, the only Son, who is truly God and is closest to the Father, has shown us what God is like. The Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and temple helpers to ask John who he was. He told them plainly, I am not the Messiah. Then when they asked him if he were Elijah, he said, No, I am not. And when they asked him if he were the prophet, he also said, No. Finally they said, Who are you then? We have to give an answer to the ones who sent us. Tell us who you are. John answered in the words of the prophet Isaiah, I am only someone shouting in the desert, Get the road ready for the Lord. Some Pharisees had also been sent to John. They asked him, Why are you baptizing people if you are not the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet? John told them, I use water to baptize people, but here with you is someone you don't know. Even though I came first, I am not good enough to untie his sandals. John said this as he was baptizing east of the Jordan River in Bethany. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one I told you about when I said, Someone else will come. He is greater than I am because he was alive before I was born. I didn't know who he was, but I came to baptize you with water so that everyone in Israel would see him. I was there and saw the Spirit come down on him like a dove from heaven, and the Spirit stayed on him. Before this, I didn't know who he was, but the one who sent me to baptize with water had told me, you will see the Spirit come down and stay on someone. Then you will know that he is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. I saw this happen, and I tell you that he is the Son of God. The next day, John was there again and two of his followers were with him. When he saw Jesus walking by, he said, Here is the Lamb of God. John's two followers heard him, and they went with Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them, he asked, What do you want? They answered, Rabbi, where do you live? The Hebrew word rabbi means teacher. Jesus replied, Come and see. It was already about four o'clock in the afternoon when they went with him and saw where he lived. So they stayed on for the rest of the day. 
One of the two men who had heard John and had gone with Jesus was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother and tell him, We have found the Messiah. The Hebrew word Messiah means the same as the Greek word Christ. Andrew brought his brother to Jesus. And when Jesus saw him, he said, Simon, son of John, you will be called Cephas. This name can be translated as Peter. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. There he met Philip, who was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Jesus said to Philip, Come with me. Philip then found Nathanael and said, We have found the one that Moses and the prophets wrote about. He is Jesus, the son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael asked, Can anything good come from Nazareth? Philip answered, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said, Here is a true descendant of our ancestor Israel, and he is not deceitful. How do you know me? Nathanael asked. Jesus answered, Before Philip called you, I saw you under the fig tree. Nathanael said, Rabbi, you are the Son of God and the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Did you believe me just because I said that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see something even greater. I tell you for certain that you will see heaven open and God's angels going up and coming down on the Son of Man. John 2. Three days later, Mary, the mother of Jesus, was at a wedding feast in the village of Cana in Galilee. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited and were there. When the wine was all gone, Mary said to Jesus, They don't have any more wine. Jesus replied, Mother, my time has not yet come. You must not tell me what to do. Mary then said to the servants, Do whatever Jesus tells you to do. At the feast there were six stone water jars that were used by the people for washing themselves in the way that their religion said they must. Each jar held about twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus told the servants to fill them to the top with water. Then after the jars had been filled, he said, Now, take some water and give it to the man in charge of the feast. The servants did as Jesus told them, and the man in charge drank some of the water that had now turned into wine. He did not know where the wine had come from, but the servants did. He called the bridegroom over and said, The best wine is always served first. Then after the guests have had plenty, the other wine is served. But you have kept the best until last. This was Jesus' first miracle and he did it in the village of Cana in Galilee. There Jesus showed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him. After this, he went with his mother, his brothers, and his disciples to the town of Capernaum, where they stayed for a few days. Not long before the Jewish festival of Passover, Jesus went to Jerusalem. There he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves in the temple. He also saw money changers sitting at their tables. So he took some rope and made a whip. Then he chased everyone out of the temple, together with their sheep and cattle. He turned over the tables of the money changers and scattered their coins. Jesus said to the people who had been selling doves, Get those doves out of here. Don't make my father's house a marketplace. The disciples then remembered that the scriptures say, My love for your house burns in me like a fire. The Jewish leaders asked Jesus, What miracle will you work to show us why you have done this? Destroy this temple, Jesus answered, and in three days I will build it again. The leaders replied, It took 46 years to build this temple. What makes you think you can rebuild it in three days? But Jesus was talking about his body as a temple. And when he was raised from death, his disciples remembered what he had told them. 
Then they believed the scriptures and the words of Jesus. In Jerusalem during Passover, many people put their faith in Jesus because they saw him work miracles. But Jesus knew what was in their hearts, and he would not let them have power over him. No one had to tell him what people were like. He already knew. John 3 There was a man named Nicodemus who was a Pharisee and a Jewish leader. One night he went to Jesus and said, Sir, we know that God has sent you to teach us. You could not work these miracles unless God were with you. Jesus replied, I tell you for certain that you must be born from above before you can see God's kingdom. Nicodemus asked, how can a grown man ever be born a second time? Jesus answered, I tell you for certain that before you can get into God's kingdom, you must be born not only by water, but by the Spirit. Humans give life to their children, yet only God's Spirit can change you into a child of God. Don't be surprised when I say that you must be born from above. Only God's Spirit gives new life. The Spirit is like the wind that blows wherever it wants to. You can hear the wind, but you don't know where it comes from or where it is going. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. Jesus replied, How can you be a teacher of Israel and not know these things? I tell you for certain that we know what we are talking about because we have seen it ourselves. But none of you will accept what we say. If you don't believe when I talk to you about things on earth, how can you possibly believe if I talk to you about things in heaven? No one has gone up to heaven except the Son of Man who came down from there. And the Son of Man must be lifted up, just as that metal snake was lifted up by Moses in the desert. Then everyone who has faith in the Son of Man will have eternal life. God loved the people of this world so much that he gave his only Son so that everyone who has faith in him will have eternal life and never die. God did not send his Son into the world to condemn its people. He sent him to save them. No one who has faith in God's Son will be condemned. But everyone who does not have faith in him has already been condemned for not having faith in God's only Son. The light has come into the world, and people who do evil things are judged guilty because they love the dark more than the light. People who do evil hate the light and won't come to the light because it clearly shows what they have done. But everyone who lives by the truth will come to the light because they want others to know that God is really the one doing what they do. Later, Jesus and his disciples went to Judea where he stayed with them for a while and was baptizing people. John had not yet been put in jail. He was at Enon near Salem where there was a lot of water, and people were coming there for John to baptize them. John's followers got into an argument with a Jewish man about a ceremony of washing. They went to John and said, Rabbi, you spoke about a man when you were with him east of the Jordan. He is now baptizing people, and everyone is going to him. John replied, No one can do anything unless God in heaven allows it. Surely you remember how I told you that I am not the Messiah? I am only the one sent ahead of him. At a wedding, the groom is the one who gets married. The best man is glad just to be there and to hear the groom's voice. That's why I am so glad. Jesus must become more important while I become less important. God's Son comes from heaven and is above all others. Everyone who comes from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks about earthly things. The one who comes from heaven is above all others. He speaks about what he has seen and heard, and yet no one believes him. But everyone who does believe him has shown that God is truthful. The Son was sent to speak God's message, and he has been given the full power of God's Spirit. The Father loves the Son and has given him everything. Everyone who has faith in the Son has eternal life. 
But no one who rejects him will ever share in that life, and God will be angry with them forever. John 4 Jesus knew that the Pharisees had heard that he was winning and baptizing more followers than John was. But Jesus' disciples were really the ones doing the baptizing and not Jesus himself. Jesus left Judea and started for Galilee again. This time he had to go through Samaria, and on his way he came to the town of Sychar. It was near the fields that Jacob had long ago given to his son Joseph. The well that Jacob had dug was still there, and Jesus sat down beside it because he was tired from traveling. It was noon, and after Jesus' disciples had gone into town to buy some food, a Samaritan woman came to draw water from the well. Jesus asked her, Would you please give me a drink of water? You are a Jew, she replied, and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink of water when Jews and Samaritans won't have anything to do with each other? Jesus answered, You don't know what God wants to give you, and you don't know who is asking you for a drink. If you did, you would ask him for the water that gives life. Sir, the woman said, You don't even have a bucket, and the well is deep. Where are you going to get this life-giving water? Our ancestor Jacob dug this well for us, and his family and animals got water from it. Are you greater than Jacob? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will get thirsty again, but no one who drinks the water I give will ever be thirsty again. The water I give is like a flowing fountain that gives eternal life. The woman replied, Sir, Please give me a drink of that water. Then I won't get thirsty and have to come to this well again. Jesus told her, Go and bring your husband. The woman answered, I don't have a husband. That's right, Jesus replied. You're telling the truth. You don't have a husband. You have already been married five times, and the man you are now living with is not your husband. The woman said, Sir, I can see that you are a prophet. My ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you Jews say Jerusalem is the only place to worship. Jesus said to her, Believe me, the time is coming when you won't worship God either on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You Samaritans don't really know the one you worship. But we Jews do know the God we worship, and by using us, God will save the world. But a time is coming, and it is already here. Even now the true worshipers are being led by the Spirit to worship the Father according to the truth. These are the ones the Father is seeking to worship Him. God is Spirit, and those who worship God must be led by the Spirit to worship Him according to the truth. The woman said, I know that the Messiah will come. He is the one we call Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. I am that one, Jesus told her. And I am speaking to you now. The disciples returned about this time and were surprised to find Jesus talking with a woman. But none of them asked him what he wanted or why he was talking with her. The woman left her water jar and ran back into town. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. Could he be the Messiah? Everyone in town went out to see Jesus. While this was happening, Jesus' disciples were saying to him, Teacher, please eat something. But Jesus told them, I have food that you don't know anything about. His disciples started asking each other, Has someone brought him something to eat? Jesus said, My food is to do what God wants. He is the one who sent me, and I must finish the work that he gave me to do. You may say that there are still four months until harvest time, but I tell you to look, and you will see that the fields are ripe and ready to harvest. 
Even now the harvest workers are receiving their reward by gathering a harvest that brings eternal life. Then everyone who planted the seed and everyone who harvests the crop will celebrate together. So the saying proves true. Some plant the seed and others harvest the crop. I am sending you to harvest crops in fields where others have done all the hard work. A lot of Samaritans in that town put their faith in Jesus because the woman had said, This man told me everything I have ever done. They came and asked him to stay in their town, and he stayed on for two days. Many more Samaritans put their faith in Jesus because of what they heard him say. They told the woman, we no longer have faith in Jesus just because of what you told us. We have heard him ourselves, and we are certain that he is the Savior of the world. Jesus had said, Prophets are honored everywhere, except in their own country. Then two days later he left and went to Galilee. The people there welcomed him, because they had gone to the festival in Jerusalem and had seen everything he had done. While Jesus was in Galilee, he returned to the village of Cana, where he had turned the water into wine. There was an official in Capernaum whose son was sick. And when the man heard that Jesus had come from Judea, he went and begged him to keep his son from dying. Jesus told the official, You won't have faith unless you see miracles and wonders. The man replied, Lord, Please come before my son dies. Jesus then said, Your son will live. Go on home to him. The man believed Jesus and started back home. Some of the official servants met him along the road and told him, Your son is better. He asked them when the boy got better, and they answered, The fever left him yesterday at one o'clock. The boy's father realized that at one o'clock the day before, Jesus had told him, Your son will live. So the man and everyone in his family put their faith in Jesus. This was the second miracle that Jesus worked after he left Judea and went to Galilee. John 5. Later, Jesus went to Jerusalem for another Jewish festival. In the city near the Sheep Gate was a pool with five porches, and its name in Hebrew was Beth Zetha. Many sick, blind, lame, and crippled people were lying close to the pool. Beside the pool was a man who had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw the man and realized that he had been crippled for a long time, he asked him, Do you want to be healed? The man answered, Lord, I don't have anyone to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. Uh, I try to get in, but someone else always gets there first. Jesus told him, Pick up your mat and walk. Right then the man was healed. He picked up his mat and started walking around. The day on which this happened was a Sabbath. When the Jewish leaders saw the man carrying his mat, they said to him, This is the Sabbath. No one is allowed to carry a mat on the Sabbath. But he replied, The man who healed me told me to pick up my mat and walk. They asked him, Who is this man that told you to pick up your mat and walk? But he did not know who Jesus was and Jesus had left because of the crowd. Later, Jesus met the man in the temple and told him, You are now well, but don't sin anymore, or something worse might happen to you. The man left and told the leaders that Jesus was the one who had healed him. They started making a lot of trouble for Jesus because he did things like this on the Sabbath. But Jesus said, my father has never stopped working, and that is why I keep on working. Now the leaders wanted to kill Jesus for two reasons. First, he had broken the law of the Sabbath. But even worse, he had said that God was his father, which made him equal with God. Jesus told the people, 
I tell you for certain that the Son cannot do anything on his own. He can do only what he sees the Father doing, and he does exactly what he sees the Father do. The Father loves the Son and has shown him everything he does. The Father will show him even greater things, and you will be amazed. Just as the Father raises the dead and gives life, so the Son gives life to anyone he wants to. The Father doesn't judge anyone, but he has made his Son the judge of everyone. The Father wants all people to honor the Son as much as they honor him. When anyone refuses to honor the Son, that is the same as refusing to honor the Father who sent him. I tell you for certain that everyone who hears my message and has faith in the one who sent me has eternal life and will never be condemned. They have already gone from death to life. I tell you for certain that the time will come, and it is already here, when all of the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who listen to it will live. The Father has the power to give life, and He has given that same power to the Son. And He has given His Son the right to judge everyone, because He is the Son of Man. Don't be surprised. The time will come when all of the dead will hear the voice of the Son of Man, and they will come out of their graves. Everyone who has done good things will rise to life, but everyone who has done evil things will rise and be condemned. I cannot do anything on my own. The Father sent me, and He is the one who told me how to judge. I judge with fairness because I obey Him, and I don't just try to please myself. If I speak for myself, there is no way to prove I am telling the truth. But there is someone else who speaks for me, and I know what he says is true. You sent messengers to John, and he told them the truth. I don't depend on what people say about me, but I tell you these things so that you may be saved. John was a lamp that gave a lot of light, and you were glad to enjoy his light for a while. But something more important than John speaks for me. I mean the things that the Father has given me to do. All of these speak for me and say that the Father sent me. The Father who sent me also speaks for me. But you have never heard his voice or seen him face to face. You have not believed his message because you refuse to have faith in the one he sent. You search the scriptures because you think you will find eternal life in them. The scriptures tell about me, but you refuse to come to me for eternal life. I don't care about human praise, but I do know that none of you love God. I have come with my Father's authority, and you have not welcomed me, but you will welcome people who come on their own. How could you possibly believe? You like to have your friends praise you, and you don't care about praise that the only God can give. Don't think that I will be the one to accuse you to the Father. You have put your hope in Moses, yet he is the very one who will accuse you. Moses wrote about me, and if you had believed Moses, you would have believed me. But if you don't believe what Moses wrote, how can you believe what I say? John 6 Jesus crossed Lake Galilee which was also known as Lake Tiberias. A large crowd had seen him work miracles to heal the sick, and those people went with him. It was almost time for the Jewish festival of Passover, and Jesus went up on a mountain with his disciples and sat down. When Jesus saw the large crowd coming toward him, he asked Philip, Where will we get enough food to feed all these people? He said this to test Philip, since he already knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, Don't you know that it would take almost a year's wages just to buy only a little bread for each of these people? Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, was one of the disciples. He spoke up and said, there is a boy here who has five small loaves of barley bread and two fish. But what good is that with all these people? The ground was covered with grass. 
and Jesus told his disciples to have everyone sit down. About 5,000 men were in the crowd. Jesus took the bread in his hands and gave thanks to God. Then he passed the bread to the people, and he did the same with the fish, until everyone had plenty to eat. The people ate all they wanted, and Jesus told his disciples to gather up the leftovers so that nothing would be wasted. The disciples gathered them up and filled twelve large baskets with what was left over from the five barley loaves. After the people had seen Jesus work this miracle, they began saying, This must be the prophet who is to come into the world. Jesus realized that they would try to force him to be their king, so he went up on a mountain where he could be alone. That evening, Jesus' disciples went down to the lake. They got into a boat and started across for Capernaum. Later that evening, Jesus had still not come to them, and a strong wind was making the water rough. When the disciples had rowed for three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the water. He kept coming closer to the boat, and they were terrified. But he said, I am Jesus. Don't be afraid. The disciples wanted to take him into the boat. But suddenly the boat reached the shore where they were headed. The people who had stayed on the east side of the lake knew that only one boat had been there. They also knew that Jesus had not left in it with his disciples. But the next day some boats from Tiberias sailed near the place where the crowd had eaten the bread for which the Lord had given thanks. They saw that Jesus and his disciples had left. Then they got into the boats and went to Capernaum to look for Jesus. They found him on the west side of the lake and asked, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, I tell you for certain that you are not looking for me because you saw the miracles, but because you ate all the food you wanted. Don't work for food that spoils. Work for food that gives eternal life. The Son of Man will give you this food because God the Father has given him the right to do so. What exactly does God want us to do? The people asked. Jesus answered, God wants you to have faith in the one he sent. They replied, What miracle will you work so that we can have faith in you? What will you do? For example, when our ancestors were in the desert, they were given manna to eat. It happened just as the scriptures say. God gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus then told them, I tell you for certain that Moses was not the one who gave you bread from heaven. My Father is the one who gives you the true bread from heaven, and the bread that God gives is the one who came down from heaven to give life to the world. The people said, Lord, give us this bread and don't ever stop. Jesus replied, I am the bread that gives life. No one who comes to me will ever be hungry. No one who has faith in me will ever be thirsty. I have told you already that you have seen me and still do not have faith in me. Everything and everyone that the Father has given me will come to me, and I won't turn any of them away. I didn't come from heaven to do what I want. I came to do what the Father wants me to do. He sent me, and he wants to make certain that none of the ones he has given me will be lost. Instead, he wants me to raise them to life on the last day. My Father wants everyone who sees the Son to have faith in Him and to have eternal life. Then I will raise them to life on the last day. The people started grumbling because Jesus had said He was the bread that had come down from heaven. They were asking each other, Isn't He Jesus the son of Joseph? Don't we know His father and mother? How can He say that He has come down from heaven? Jesus told them, Stop grumbling. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me makes them want to come. But if they do come, I will raise them to life on the last day. One of the prophets wrote, God will teach all of them, and so everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him will come to me. The only one who has seen the Father is the one who has come from him. No one else has ever seen the Father. I tell you for certain, that everyone who has faith in me has eternal life. I am the bread that gives life. 
Your ancestors ate manna in the desert, and later they died. But the bread from heaven has come down, so that no one who eats it will ever die. I am that bread from heaven. Everyone who eats it will live forever. My flesh is the life-giving bread that I give to the people of this world. They started arguing with each other and asked, How can he give us his flesh to eat? Jesus answered, I tell you for certain that you won't live unless you eat the flesh and drink the blood of the Son of Man. But if you do eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will have eternal life, and I will raise you to life on the last day. My flesh is the true food, and my blood is the true drink. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you are one with me, and I am one with you. The living Father sent me, and I have life because of him. Now everyone who eats my flesh will live because of me. The bread that comes down from heaven is not like what your ancestors ate. They died, but whoever eats this bread will live forever. Jesus was teaching in a Jewish place of worship in Capernaum when he said these things. Many of Jesus' disciples heard him and said, This is too hard for anyone to understand. Jesus knew that his disciples were grumbling. So he asked, Does this bother you? What if you should see the Son of Man go up to heaven where he came from? The Spirit is the one who gives life. Human strength can do nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are from that life-giving Spirit. But some of you refuse to have faith in me. Jesus said this because from the beginning he knew who would have faith in him. He also knew which one would betray him. Then Jesus said, You cannot come to me unless the Father makes you want to come. That is why I have told these things to all of you. Because of what Jesus said, many of his disciples turned their backs on him and stopped following him. Jesus then asked his twelve disciples if they were going to leave him. Simon Peter answered, Lord, there is no one else that we can go to. Your words give eternal life. We have faith in you, and we are sure that you are God's Holy One. Jesus told his disciples, I chose all twelve of you, but one of you is a demon. Jesus was talking about Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. He would later betray Jesus, even though he was one of the twelve disciples. John 7 Jesus decided to leave Judea and to start going through Galilee because the Jewish leaders wanted to kill him. It was almost time for the Festival of Shelters, and Jesus' brothers said to him, Why don't you go to Judea? Then your disciples can see what you are doing. No one does anything in secret if they want others to know about them, so let the world know what you are doing. Even Jesus' own brothers had not yet become his followers. Jesus answered, My time hasn't yet come, but your time is always here. The people of this world cannot hate you. They hate me, because I tell them that they do evil things. Go on to the festival. My time hasn't yet come, and I am not going. Jesus said this, and stayed on in Galilee. After Jesus' brothers had gone to the festival, he decided to go, and he went secretly, without telling anyone. During the festival, the Jewish leaders looked for Jesus and asked, Where is he? The crowds even got into an argument about him. Some were saying, Jesus is a good man. While others were saying, He is lying to everyone. But the people were afraid of their leaders, and none of them talked in public about him. When the festival was about half over, Jesus stood up and started teaching in the temple. The leaders were surprised and said, How does this man know so much? He has never been taught. Jesus replied, I am not teaching something that I thought up. What I teach comes from the one who sent me. If you really want to obey God, 
you will know if what I teach comes from God or from me. If I wanted to bring honor to myself, I would speak for myself. But I want to honor the one who sent me. That is why I tell the truth and not a lie. Didn't Moses give you the law? Yet none of you obey it. So why do you want to kill me? The crowd replied, You're crazy. What makes you think someone wants to kill you? Jesus answered, I worked one miracle, and it amazed you. Moses commanded you to circumcise your sons, but it wasn't really Moses who gave you this command. It was your ancestors, and even on the Sabbath you circumcise your sons in order to obey the law of Moses. Why are you angry with me for making someone completely well on the Sabbath? Don't judge by appearances. Judge by what is right. Some of the people from Jerusalem were saying, Isn't this the man they want to kill? Yet here he is, speaking for everyone to hear, and no one is arguing with him. Do you suppose the authorities know that he is the Messiah? But how could that be? No one knows where the Messiah will come from, but we know where this man comes from. As Jesus was teaching in the temple, he shouted, Do you really think you know me and where I came from? I didn't come on my own. The one who sent me is truthful, and you don't know him. But I know the one who sent me, because I came from him. Some of the people wanted to arrest Jesus right then. But no one even laid a hand on him, because his time had not yet come. A lot of people in the crowd put their faith in him and said, When the Messiah comes, he surely won't perform more miracles than this man has done. When the Pharisees heard the crowd arguing about Jesus, they got together with the chief priest and sent some temple police to arrest him. But Jesus told them, I will be with you a little while longer, and then I will return to the one who sent me. You will look for me, but you won't find me. You cannot go where I am going. The Jewish leaders asked each other, Where can he go to keep us from finding him? Is he going to some foreign country where our people live? Is he going there to teach the Greeks? What did he mean by saying that we will look for him but won't find him? Why can't we go where he is going? On the last and most important day of the festival, Jesus stood up and shouted, If you are thirsty, come to me and drink. Have faith in me, and you will have life-giving water flowing from deep inside you, just as the scriptures say. Jesus was talking about the Holy Spirit, who would be given to everyone that had faith in him. The Spirit had not yet been given to anyone, since Jesus had not yet been given his full glory. When the crowd heard Jesus say this, some of them said, He must be the prophet. Others said, He is the Messiah. Others even said, Can the Messiah come from Galilee? The scriptures say that the Messiah will come from the family of King David. Doesn't this mean that he will be born in David's hometown of Bethlehem? The people started taking sides against each other because of Jesus. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him. When the temple police returned to the chief priests and Pharisees, they were asked, Why didn't you bring Jesus here? They answered, No one has ever spoken like that man. The Pharisees said to them, Have you also been fooled? Not one of the chief priests or the Pharisees has faith in him. And these people who don't know the law are under God's curse anyway. Nicodemus was there at the time. He was the same one who had earlier come to see Jesus. Nicodemus was a member of the Jewish council and said, Our law doesn't let us condemn people before we hear what they have to say. We cannot judge them before we know what they have done. Then they said, Nicodemus, you must be from Galilee. Read the scriptures and you will find that no prophet is to come from Galilee.
John ate. Everyone else went home. But Jesus walked out to the Mount of Olives. Then early the next morning he went to the temple. The people came to him and he sat down and started teaching them. The Pharisees and the teachers of the Lord of Moses brought in a woman who had been caught in bed with a man who was not her husband. They made her stand in the middle of the crowd. Then they said, Teacher, this woman was caught sleeping with a man who is not her husband. The law of Moses teaches that a woman like this should be stoned to death. What do you say? They asked Jesus this question because they wanted to test him and bring some charge against him. But Jesus simply bent over and started writing on the ground with his finger. They kept on asking Jesus about the woman. Finally, he stood up and said, If any of you have never sinned, then go ahead and throw the first stone at her. Once again, he bent over and began writing on the ground. The people left one by one, beginning with the oldest one in the crowd. Finally, Jesus and the woman were there alone. Jesus stood up and asked her, Where is everyone? Isn't there anyone left to accuse you? No, sir, the woman answered. Then Jesus told her, I am not going to accuse you either. You may go now, but don't sin anymore. Once again, Jesus spoke to the people. This time he said, I am the light for the world. Follow me, and you won't be walking in the dark. You will have the light that gives life. The Pharisees objected. You are the only one speaking for yourself, and what you say isn't true. Jesus replied, Even if I do speak for myself, what I say is true. I know where I came from and where I am going, but you don't know where I am from or where I am going. You judge in the same way that everyone else does, but I don't judge anyone. If I did judge, I would judge fairly, because I would not be doing it alone. The Father who sent me is here with me. Your law requires two witnesses to prove that something is true. I am one of my witnesses, and the Father who sent me is the other one. Where is your Father? They asked Jesus. You don't know me or my Father, Jesus answered. If you knew me, you would know my Father. Jesus said this while he was still teaching in the place where the temple treasures were stored. But no one arrested him, because his time had not yet come. Jesus also told them, I am going away, and you will look for me. But you cannot go where I am going, and you will die with your sins unforgiven. The Jewish leaders asked, Does he intend to kill himself? Is that what he means by saying we cannot go where he is going? Jesus answered, You are from below, but I am from above. You belong to this world, but I don't. That is why I said you will die with your sins unforgiven. If you don't have faith in me for who I am, you will die, and your sins will not be forgiven. Who are you? They asked Jesus. Jesus answered, I am exactly who I told you at the beginning. I have a lot more to say about you, especially about all the evil you have done. The one who sent me is truthful, and I tell the people of this world only what I have heard from him. No one understood that Jesus was talking to them about the Father. Jesus went on to say, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, you will know who I am. You will also know that I don't do anything on my own. I say only what my Father taught me. The one who sent me is with me. I always do what pleases him, and he will never leave me. After Jesus said this, many of the people put their faith in him. Jesus told the people who had faith in him, If you keep on obeying what I have said, you truly are my disciples. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered, We are Abraham's children. We have never been anyone's slaves. How can you say we will be set free? Jesus replied, 
I tell you for certain that anyone who sins is a slave of sin, and slaves don't stay in the family forever, though the son will always remain in the family. If the son gives you freedom, you are free. I know that you are from Abraham's family, yet you want to kill me because my message is not really in your hearts. I am telling you what my father has shown me, just as you are doing what your father has taught you. The people said to Jesus, Abraham is our father. Jesus replied, If you were Abraham's children, you would do what Abraham did. Instead, you want to kill me for telling you the truth that God gave me. Abraham never did anything like that, but you are doing exactly what your father does. Don't accuse us of having someone else as our father, they said. We just have one father, and he is God. Jesus answered, If God were your father, you would love me, because I came from God, and only from him. He sent me. I did not come on my own. Why can't you understand what I am talking about? Can't you stand to hear what I am saying? Your father is the devil, and you do exactly what he wants. He has always been a murderer and a liar. There is nothing truthful about him. He speaks on his own, and everything he says is a lie. Not only is he a liar himself, but he is also the father of all lies. Everything I have told you is true, and you still refuse to have faith in me. Can any of you accuse me of sin? If you cannot, why won't you have faith in me? After all, I am telling you the truth. Anyone who belongs to God will listen to his message. But you refuse to listen because you don't belong to God. The people told Jesus, We were right to say that you are a Samaritan and that you have a demon in you. Jesus answered, I don't have a demon in me. I honor my father, and you refuse to honor me. I don't want honor for myself, but there is one who wants me to be honored, and he is also the one who judges. I tell you for certain that if you obey my words, you will never die. Then the people said, Now we are sure that you have a demon. Abraham is dead, and so are the prophets. How can you say that no one who obeys your words will ever die? Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, If I honored myself, it would mean nothing. My father is the one who honors me. You claim that he is your God, even though you don't really know him. If I said I didn't know him, I would be a liar just like all of you. But I know him, and I do what he says. Your father Abraham was really glad to see me. You are not even fifty years old, they said. How could you have seen Abraham? Jesus answered, I tell you for certain that even before Abraham was, I was, and I am. The people picked up stones to kill Jesus, but he hit and left the temple. John 9 As Jesus walked along, he saw a man who had been blind since birth. Jesus' disciples asked, Teacher, why was this man born blind? Was it because he or his parents sinned? No, it wasn't, Jesus answered. But because of this, you will see God work a miracle for him. As long as it is day, we must do what the one who sent me wants me to do. When night comes, no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light for the world. After Jesus said this, he spit on the ground. He made some mud and smeared it on the man's eyes. Then he said, Go and wash off the mud in Siloam Pool. The man went and washed in Siloam, which means one who is sent. When he had washed off the mud, he could see. The man's neighbors and the people who had seen him begging wondered if he really could be the same man. 
Some of them said he was the same beggar, while others said he only looked like him. But he told them, I am that man. Then how can you see? They asked. He answered, Someone named Jesus made some mud and uh, smeared it on my eyes. He told me to go and wash it off in Siloam Pool. When I did, I could see. Where is he now? They asked. I don't know. He answered. The day when Jesus made the mud and healed the man was a Sabbath. So the people took the man to the Pharisees. They asked him how he was able to see, and he answered, Jesus made some mud and smeared it on my eyes. Then after I washed off the mud, I could see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man Jesus does not come from God. If he did, he would not break the law of the Sabbath. Others asked, How could someone who is a sinner work such a miracle? Since the Pharisees could not agree among themselves, they asked the man, What do you say about this one who healed your eyes? He is a, a prophet, the man told them. But the Jewish leaders would not believe that the man had once been blind. They sent for his parents and asked them, Is this the son that you said was born blind? How can he now see? The man's parents answered, we are certain that he is our son, and we know that he was born blind. But we don't know how he got his sight or who gave it to him. Ask him. He is old enough to speak for himself. The man's parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. The leaders had already agreed that no one was to have anything to do with anyone who said Jesus was the Messiah. The leaders called the man back and said, Swear by God to tell the truth. We know that Jesus is a sinner. The man replied, I don't know if he is a sinner or not. All I know is that I used to be blind, but now I can see. What did he do to you? The Jewish leaders asked. How did he heal your eyes? The man answered, I have already told you once, and you refused to listen. Why do you want me to tell you again? Do you also want to become his disciples? The leaders insulted the man and said, You are his follower. We are followers of Moses. We are sure that God spoke to Moses, but we don't even know where Jesus comes from. The man replied, How strange. He healed my eyes, and yet you don't know where he comes from. We know that God listens only to people who love and obey him. God doesn't listen to sinners. And this is the first time in history that anyone has ever given sight to someone born blind. Jesus could not do anything unless he came from God. The leaders told the man, You have been a sinner since the day you were born. Do you think you can teach us anything? Then they said, You can never come back into any of our meeting places. When Jesus heard what had happened, he went and found the man. Then Jesus asked, Do you have faith in the Son of Man? He replied, Sir, if you will tell me who he is, I will put my faith in him. You have already seen him. Jesus answered, And right now he is talking with you. The man said, Lord, I put my faith in you. Then he worshipped Jesus. Jesus told him, I came to judge the people of this world. I am here to give sight to the blind and to make blind everyone who sees. When the Pharisees heard Jesus say this, they asked, Are we blind? Jesus answered, If you were blind, you would not be guilty. But now that you claim to see, you will keep on being guilty. John 10. Jesus said, I tell you for certain that only thieves and robbers climb over the fence instead of going in through the gate to the sheep pen. But the gatekeeper opens the gate for the shepherd, and he goes in through it. 
The sheep know their shepherd's voice. He calls each of them by name and leads them out. When he has led out all of his sheep, he walks in front of them and they follow, because they know his voice. The sheep will not follow strangers. They don't recognize a stranger's voice, and they run away. Jesus told the people this story, but they did not understand what he was talking about. Jesus said, I tell you for certain that I am the gate for the sheep. Everyone who came before me was a thief or a robber, and the sheep did not listen to any of them. I am the gate. All who come in through me will be saved. Through me they will come and go and find pasture. A thief comes only to rob, kill and destroy. I came so that everyone would have life and have it in its fullest. I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd gives up his life for his sheep. Hired workers are not like the shepherd. They don't own the sheep, and when they see a wolf coming, they run off and leave the sheep. Then the wolf attacks and scatters the flock. Hired workers run away because they don't care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and they know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father, and I give up my life for my sheep. I have other sheep that are not in this sheep pen. I must bring them together, too, when they hear my voice. Then there will be one flock of sheep and one shepherd. The Father loves me because I give up my life so that I may receive it back again. No one takes my life from me. I give it up willingly. I have the power to give it up and the power to receive it back again, just as my Father commanded me to do. The Jews took sides because of what Jesus had told them. Many of them said, He has a demon in him. He is crazy. Why listen to him? But others said, How could anyone with a demon in him say these things? No one like that could give sight to a blind person. That winter Jesus was in Jerusalem for the temple festival. One day he was walking in that part of the temple known as Solomon's Porch. And the people gathered all around him. They said, How long are you going to keep us guessing? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you refuse to believe me. The things I do by my Father's authority show who I am. But since you are not my sheep, you don't believe me. My sheep know my voice, and I know them. They follow me, and I give them eternal life so that they will never be lost. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father gave them to me, and he is greater than all others. No one can snatch them from his hands, and I am one with the Father. Once again, the Jewish leaders picked up stones in order to kill Jesus. But he said, I have shown you many good things that my father sent me to do. Which one are you going to stone me for? They answered, We are not stoning you because of any good thing you did. We are stoning you because you did a terrible thing. You are just a man, and here you are claiming to be God. Jesus replied, In your scriptures, doesn't God say, You are God's? The scriptures cannot be destroyed, and God spoke to those people and called them gods. So why do you accuse me of a terrible sin for saying that I am the Son of God? After all, it is the Father who prepared me for this work. He is also the one who sent me into the world. If I don't do as my Father does, you should not believe me. But if I do what my Father does, you should believe because of that, even if you don't have faith in me. Then you will know for certain that the Father is one with me, and I am one with the Father. Again they wanted to arrest Jesus, but he escaped and crossed the Jordan to the place where John had earlier been baptizing. While Jesus was there, many people came to him. They were saying, John didn't work any miracles, but everything he said about Jesus is true. A lot of those people also put their faith in Jesus. John 11 
A man by the name of Lazarus was sick in the village of Bethany. He had two sisters, Mary and Martha. This was the same Mary who later poured perfume on the Lord's head and wiped his feet with her hair. The sisters sent a message to the Lord and told him that his good friend Lazarus was sick. When Jesus heard this, he said, His sickness won't end in death. It will bring glory to God and his son. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and brother, but he stayed where he was for two more days. Then he said to his disciples, Now we'll go back to Judea. Teacher, they said, The people there want to stone you to death. Why do you want to go back? Jesus answered, Aren't there twelve hours in each day? If you walk during the day, you will have light from the sun, and you won't stumble. But if you walk during the night, you will stumble, because there isn't any light inside you. Then he told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, and I am going there to wake him up. They replied, Lord, if he is asleep, he will get better. Jesus really meant that Lazarus was dead, but they thought he was talking only about sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. I am glad that I wasn't there, because now you will have a chance to put your faith in me. Let's go to him. Thomas, whose nickname was Twin, said to the other disciples, Come on, let's go so we can die with him. When Jesus got to Bethany, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Bethany was only about two miles from Jerusalem, and many people had come from the city to comfort Martha and Mary because their brother had died. When Martha heard that Jesus had arrived, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Yet even now I know that God will do anything you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will live again. Martha answered, I know that he will be raised to life on the last day when all the dead are raised. Jesus then said, I am the one who raises the dead to life. Everyone who has faith in me will live, even if they die. And everyone who lives because of faith in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are Christ, the Son of God. You are the one we hoped would come into the world. After Martha said this, she went and privately said to her sister Mary, The teacher is here, and he wants to see you. As soon as Mary heard this, she got up and went out to Jesus. He was still outside the village where Martha had gone to meet him. Many people had come to comfort Mary, and when they saw her quickly leave the house, they thought she was going out to the tomb to cry, so they followed her. Mary went to where Jesus was. Then as soon as she saw him, she kneeled at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw that Mary and the people with her were crying, he was terribly upset and asked, Where have you put his body? They replied, Lord, come and you will see. Jesus started crying, and the people said, See how much he loved Lazarus? Some of them said, He gives sight to the blind. Why couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still terribly upset. So he went to the tomb, which was a cave with a stone rolled against the entrance. Then he told the people to roll the stone away. But Martha said, Lord, you know that Lazarus has been dead four days, and there will be a bad smell. Jesus replied, Didn't I tell you that if you had faith, you would see the glory of God? After the stone had been rolled aside, Jesus looked up toward heaven and prayed, Father, I thank you for answering my prayer. I know that you always answer my prayers. But I said this so that the people here would believe that you sent me. When Jesus had finished praying, he shouted, Lazarus, come out! The man who had been dead came out. His hands and feet were wrapped with strips of burial cloth 
and a cloth covered his face. Jesus then told the people, Untie him and let him go. Many of the people who had come to visit Mary saw the things that Jesus did, and they put their faith in him. Others went to the Pharisees and told what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called the council together and said, What should we do? This man is working a lot of miracles. If we don't stop him now, everyone will put their faith in him. Then the Romans will come and destroy our temple and our nation. One of the council members was Caiaphas, who was also high priest that year. He spoke up and said, You people don't have any sense at all. Don't you know it is better for one person to die for the people than for the whole nation to be destroyed? Caiaphas did not say this on his own. As high priest that year, he was prophesying that Jesus would die for the nation. Yet Jesus would not die just for the Jewish nation. He would die to bring together all of God's scattered people. From that day on, the council started making plans to put Jesus to death. Because of this plot against him, Jesus stopped going around in public. He went to the town of Ephraim, which was near the desert, and he stayed there with his disciples. It was almost time for Passover. Many of the Jewish people who lived out in the country had come to Jerusalem to get themselves ready for the festival.